Hey, Mark Silver here. You know, we sell a lot of GPS receivers, and about 25% of the time when we sell a receiver to a customer, they'll call us up and they'll say, hey, why is my brand new GPS receiver measuring elevations that are about 70 feet off from reality? Well, the answer is they're not, and the secondary answer is it's ellipsoid versus orthometric elevations. So let's take a few moments and talk about this. Now, the Earth is actually an oblate spheroid. So it's like a basketball that we push down on the north and south poles. Because it's spinning on its axes and it's got a molten core, it's actually gotten a little bit wider around the waist than it is tall. We model the Earth as an ellipsoid. So we use a reference ellipsoid. And two numbers completely define the ellipsoid. There's the radius at the equator and there's the radius at the pole. Um, these numbers are massaged a little bit and we get a major axis A and we get a 1 over F or a flattening ratio. It's about one part in 300. So these two numbers, the datum, completely define the reference ellipsoid. And GPS receivers know this ellipsoid and they know where the center of the earth is and so they measure the height of the GPS antenna above the ellipsoid. Now what you're used to seeing in elevations, like if we look at a topo map, and this is a topo map of the top of the tram at Snowbird, and you'll see it's got 10,992 feet listed. This is an orthometric height. And um, these are the heights that you see on road signs when you're driving around the country. If you pull the, uh, the cover off of a um, vertical monument that the NGS has set and you look up the data sheet, it will list an orthometric or a leveled height. So the way these orthometric heights are determined is we find a mean sea level, someplace in San Diego, let's say, and then we run a precise leveling loop from San Diego up to, say, Salt Lake City. And this loop is comprised of making a bunch of short little jumps with two staves and measuring the forward and uh, back elevations. Now, when we do this, there's a problem that's introduced, and that is that the apparent level depends upon the path traveled. So if we travel over an area of local high gravity or low gravity, you'll see that that mass um, that's underneath the core of the Earth will cause our leveling instruments to be slightly off. Um, so the geoid separation, and this is the value that is the difference between ellipsoid and orthometric heights, it varies from 40 meters down to 10 or 15 meters in the United States. Um, this picture shows you that difference. Um, you'll notice up here around the uh, caldera of Yellowstone is where it's the least. And these changes in the geoid separation are, are due primarily because of undulations in the gravity of the Earth. And here's some NASA pictures showing you the changes in gravity. And you can see up around the caldera in Yellowstone, there's a change. Now, how do we get from an ellipsoid height to an orthometric height? Well, what the, the orthometric height is, is it's the distance along this cord from the geoid up to the Earth's surface. Now, the geoid is mean sea level. So if we were to dig a canal or a tunnel from San Diego up to Salt Lake City and fill it with seawater, this would be the level of the water uh, in the absence of tides and, and uh, wind would settle at. So if we know the ellipsoid height, which GPS receivers measure, and we know the geoid separation, then the orthometric height can be computed as the ellipsoid height minus the geoid separation. Now this is because the geoid separation is defined as this distance. You can see the arrow goes down in this case. So there's a sign change there on us. Now most consumer GPS receivers use 
an EGM 96 model, which divides each degree, one degree block in the world into 16 squares. So there's 15 minute spacings. This model is defined worldwide and it generates results that are within about 10 meters of the correct separation. In Ashtech GPS receivers, like um, with the programs that we supply, Mobile Mapper Field, or Fast Survey, or Promark Field, you can choose whatever geoid model you'd like to use. So today the current model is geoid 2012A. And this model divides each one degree block into 3,600 squares. Now, when the programs look at these squares, they actually interpolate the nearest 24 squares. They put a cubic spline through all of these different squares and compute a value that's someplace on this surface between the, the actual known points. This can result in orthometric heights that are accurate to one centimeter. Now, I thought it would be interesting to show you the changes in the geoid over time. So, we have EGM-96, which is used in most consumer GPS receivers. And then, uh, in 1999, we have geoid-99, 2003, 2009, and then just in the last 60 days, we've actually had three geoids, geoid-09, geoid-12, and geoid-12A. So, what's the difference between these? Let's assume geoid-12A is perfect or correct. Uh, in Salt Lake City, this points up in the hills a couple miles from here. In Salt Lake City, uh, Geoid 12 was exactly the same result. Geoid 12, or Geoid 09, however, was a tenth of a meter, or 0.34 feet difference. Geoid 3 was 0.15 meters different, and Geoid 99, 0.112. EGM 896, you can see, is two feet off. So this model is, is, uh, generates two feet of air. So these geoids, I mean, they change all the time. And hopefully they're getting better over time. How much does the geoid change in a short distance? Well, let's plot the geoid separation from the tram at Snowbird down to our office here in downtown Salt Lake City. So I've just plotted a straight line. It's about 17 miles or about 27 kilometers. So um, if we look at the geoid separation, just over this short distance, the geoid separation changes over a meter. And you can see it's not a straight line. It's, it's got some curve to it. Well, what would happen if we used a consumer GPS receiver? Well, EGM-96 at Snowbird is 16.81. The geoid 12 value is 15.627. There's an air of 1.2 meters, or about 4 feet of air, in EGM-96. Um, at eye gauge, at our office, um, GOA-12 is 16.7 meters, and um, EGM-96 estimates about 16.9 meters, so about a quarter of a meter of air. In reality, EGM... 96 or EGM 84, it's um, another derivation, is responsible for most of the elevation error that you see in consumer GPS receivers. Now, we're always going to have this problem of different geoids being used with ellipsoid elevations. Why don't we just use ellipsoid elevations to model the Earth and take the answers we get from the GPS receiver? Well, I've got a topo map here, and this shows the Great Salt Lake, which is just west of where I'm at. And um, if you look here, it's about 90 miles from the north end to the south end here. And the geoid separation value changes from 15.7 to 17.5 meters across the surface of this lake. Now, in the absence of tides and in the absence of uh, wind, this lake will settle to an even area. And the problem with the ellipsoid is that water does not necessarily flow downhill in ellipsoid space. So I think that all of us would like to have elevations expressed in a way that if we have a large lake, um, the, the lake level around the lake in the absence of wind and tidal variations 
would be at a constant elevation. So um, that's why we don't necessarily use ellipsoid elevations. Now, if you're collecting data in the field, I'd suggest that you store your data as ellipsoid elevations and just always keep this an ellipsoid elevation. And then when you want to have an orthometric height, you can use the geoid de jour, you know, the geoid that's the best geoid at the moment that you want an orthometric height to convert to an orthometric, orthometric elevation. Now, if you're using Mobile Mapper Field or Promark Field, there is, um, if you go to the web, and I'll show you this, this link here in a second, but you can install a geoid from an Aztec website. You will actually install the geoid model, and it's, it's tens of megabytes in size for just the United States. And then you can pick the vertical datum that you're going to use as part of your job. So here's our horizontal coordinate system. There's also a vertical coordinate system or a vertical datum. I've chosen Geoid 09. You need to choose this during the job setup. And then when the GPS receiver measures an ellipsoid height, it will apply the geoid to that ellipsoid height and calculate an orthometric elevation for you. If you're using ArcPad, you're somewhat limited because all you can do is enter one geoid separation value. Um, and yeah, I know this sucks. I just showed you the, the, the graph from Snowbird down to here. You're going to have to pick a geoid separation value that makes sense in the center of your job. So again, if you're going to collect data in ArcPad and you want to collect precision GIS data, I'd suggest that you record ellipsoid values and then apply a geoid to them later. Um, if you're using Fast Survey or Carlson Surf CE, um, the best way to implement a geoid is to subset the geoid using the geoid extractor tool. And I'll show you where that is in a second. And that's going to generate a geoid separation file, a .gsf file. You can place that on your mobile device. And then under the equipment and then localization on the GPS tab, you can choose a geoid file. Now, in uh, Fast Survey and Carlson Surf CE, we usually subset about a quarter of a western state or a third of a western state. So I've got Utah, Geoid 2009, and then I've got the central region extracted out as a single file. If we put a giant file that's got the whole state on it, it will take the program an extra minute to open every time we start it. So let's um, cancel out and look at some web resources for geoids. First off, um, if you're trying to get to the geoid file, if you go to um, our, the Ashtec web geoid location, you don't need to remember the long address we had before. Just remember my website, which is ashgps.com. If you roll down here, there's a link that says geoid tools. While you're here, if you haven't uh, put your email address on my uh, mail web list, probably wouldn't hurt to do it. I'll send you a couple notes a month or maybe one note a month telling you about new software that's available for Ashtec GPS receivers. Uh, let's see, where's my mobile I wanted to click on uh, Geoid Tools. So this will take you to the Ashtec website and um, you can choose the right Geoid. If we go to the United States, we'll have Geoid 03, Geoid 09, we'll have Alaska 06, Alaska 09, and then a separate Geoid for Hawaii. These geoids are built by um, the Kings of Geodesy, and they are the National Geodetic Survey, and their website is www.ngs.noaa.gov. Um, these guys are the smartest guys in the country, and if you go to uh, tools, they provided us with some neat toolkits. So here's the Geoid 12A toolkit, and here we can type in a latitude and longitude, push a button, and uh, we'll get an online determination of the geoid separation. You can also input a comma separated or tab separated um, file and uh, the online tool will calculate the geoid separations for you there. Um, hopefully this will help you understand the difference between ellipsoid and orthometric heights. Um, some common questions and comments that I get from customers are, well, why doesn't the GPS receiver just take care of this on its own so I don't have to think about it. Well, I'm all for that, but there's a problem. Uh, one problem is we've had three geoids in the last 60 days, so the GPS would have to be pretty smart at picking the geoids, 
most people or many people may not want to use the latest geoid. Perhaps they've got a mining project and they've been using uh, G99 for, since the beginning of time. There's no reason for them to switch geoids midstream and have to adjust all of their data. In addition, um, the geoids that um, cover the United States only cover the United States. They're separate geoids for Alaska. They're separate geoids for other places in the world. And many of these geoids overlap each other. So really, you'd have to have a pretty smart GPS receiver to pick the right geoid um, to use with your system. The other thing is, is that I would warn you, if you don't know which geoid to use, then how would you expect your GPS receiver to automatically pick the right geoid? Well, I'll see you in another video. Hopefully, I haven't wasted your time. Thanks a lot.